Dear students, welcome you to session 54 of chapter Pricing of Material Issues, Cost and Management Accounting, 3rd semester BCom, Mangalore University. Session 54 is about the preparation of stores ledger using the FIFO method. There are adjustments relating to the return to stores, the stock shortage, excess, as well as the freight being paid on a date other than the date of purchase. Now, this can be worked out in this way, preparation of stores ledger. So, stores ledger, the format of a stores ledger, description, the code number, location code, unit, maximum level, minimum level, reorder level and reorder quantity and the different columns, date, receipts, issues and balance. Under receipts, the columns for goods received note number, quantity, rate, amount. Under issues column, material requisition number, quantity, rate, amount. Balance, quantity, rate, amount. To begin with, the opening balance 250 units at a total value of rupees 275. First, June 1st, the balance 250 units and the value is given, value is 275 rupees. So the per unit rate has to be found out. 275 divided by 250 units, it is 1.10. Third, received 100 units at rupees 1.2 per unit. Third, 100 units in receipts column, quantity 100 units and the rate is 1.2, amount is 120. So there are two lots now, 250 units at rupees 1.10, 275 and the second lot is 100 units at rupees 1.20, 120. On January 4th, issued 50 units. So under issue column, 50 units and it is issued from the first lot. So the method adopted here is first in, first out. So from the 250 units, 50 units are issued at rupees 1.10, that is 55 rupees. So the remaining, the balance is 250 minus 50, we have 200 units at rupees 1.10, 220 rupees and 100 units at rupees 1.20, 120. On January 6th, received eight and, June 6th, received 800 units at rupees 1.30 per unit. So the receipts column, 800 units, 1.30, the amount is 1040. Now, the balance will be the first lot 200 at rupees 1.10, 100 at rupees 1.20 and the recent purchase 800 at rupees 1.30. On January 7th, June, sorry, June 7th, issued 300 units. 7th, issue column, 300 units have to be issued. Now, here we have the first lot with 200 and the second lot with 100. So, both these will be taken from the first 200 units at, at, at 1.10 and the remaining from the second lot 100 units at rupees 1.20. The first and second lot are completely issued now and what is remaining is 800 units at rupees 1.30 that is 1040. On 8th return to store 20 units issued on 4th June. So there is a return, that means the stores department is receiving the goods. So the return is the issue which was made on 4th June. So when we look at 4th June, we can see that 50 units are issued at 1.10. So at the same rate, 1.10, it will be received back. So it's receipts 20 units at rupees 1.10, 22 is the value. Now there are two lots, one is 800 at rupees 1.30 and now whatever is returned by the uh, department, 20 units at rupees 1.10. Now 12th received 300 units at rupees 1.40. So receipts quantity 300 at 1.40, 420 rupees. So the balance will be 800 units at rupees 1.30, 20 rupees at rupees 1.10 and 300 units at rupees 1.40. On 15th, 320 units are issued. So 320 units will be issued from the first lot. The method used first in, first out. So from 800, 320 units will be issued. 320 units at the 1.30. So what is remaining is 
800 minus 320, 480 at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10 and 300 units at 1.40. And on 18, receive 100 units at rupees 1.40 per unit. Received 100 units. So 18 again receives 100 units at 1.40, 140. Now the balance will be 480 at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, and 100 units at 1.40, which is received now. On 20th, stock verification revealed a loss of 20 units. That is, we have lost 20 units. Whenever there is a loss or any shortage, it is always shown on the first item because the method which we are adopting is the first in, first out method. So from the first loss, that is the 480 units at 1.30, 20 units are lost. So what is being done, it is valued at 1.30 per unit. So loss. In the issue column 20 units at 1.3026. So here the balance will be from 480 units, 20 units are lost. The remaining is 460 units at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, and 100 units at 1.40. Now on 21st, issued 100 units. 100 units are issued from the first lot. From 460, 100 units are issued and it's valued at 1.30. 100 units, in issue column, 100 units at 1.30, 130. So the remaining uh, um, stock of, um, units of materials are 360 units at rupees 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, and 100 units at 1.40. Return to vendor, 30 units received on 18th June. So 18th June, the purchased goods, materials at 100 units at 1.40. Now that will be returned. So that is the last item here. So now on 23rd issue, that is a return, 30 units at 1.4042 is the value. You can see here in the last items 100, 30 units are returned. So now remaining is only 70 units. And uh, uh, price, the price, which, the rate which we have considered is 1.40 because uh, it was purchased at that particular rate at 1 rupees 1.40. Now the balance will be 360 at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10. 300 units at 1.40 and 70 units at 1.40. This, this 70 units is arrived by deducting the 30 units which were returned. So 100 minus 30, 70 units at rupees 1.40. The value is 98 rupees. And on 25th, transferred from job A to job B, 50 units. Now what happens when there is a transfer? That is from one job, materials are transferred to another job. So usually uh, it uh, does not affect the balance, uh, the stock ledger, but also it can be treated as a receipt and issue or it need not be entered. There are two ways. So one is it can be entered as receipts and immediately issued to the, the other department without affecting the balance of the stores ledger. The other way is not to enter it in the stores ledger at all because anyway it is not going to affect the balance. So in this case, uh, the uh, receipts, we are receiving 50 units at 1.1055. Immediately, we are transferring it, issuing it 50 units at rupees 1.1055, thereby not affecting the balance sheet, the balance of the materials. So the balance will be, uh, balance remains the same, 360 units at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, and 70 units at 1.40. On 26th, received 200 units at rupees 1 per unit. So on 26th, 200 units are received at 1 and the amount value is 200. So the balance available will be the first lot 360 at 1.30, second 20 units at 1.10, third 300 units at 1.40, fourth 70 units at 1.4 and the recent purchase 200 units at 1 rupees, the value is 200. Now, on 28th, 
there is a transaction that is right paid on purchase made on 26th June, rupees 70. So we have incurred freight charges on the purchase made uh, rupees 70. Uh, so it is for the purchase of materials made on 26th. So any expenses incurred in purchasing the materials has to be included to the purchase cost of the materials itself. And since it was paid on the next day, we are going to in write the amount now in the receipts column, freight 70 rupees. Now, this 70 rupees will be added to the purchase cost of the material, thereby increasing the per unit cost of the material. So, it can be seen here, the balance, the uh, 360 units at 1.30, 20 units at rupees 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, 70 units at 1.40, and now we can see 200 units, the amount is 270. So this 270 is the purchase price 200 and the freight charges together 270 thereby changing the per unit um, cost of material 270 divided by 200 units 1.35. So, whenever there is a freight or any other expenses paid on purchases, it has to be included in the purchase cost of the material. So, in this way, it is being included here and the per unit cost of the material has changed. Now, on 30th, they issued 150 units. So, issue column 30th, 150 uh, units at rupees 1.30, the first lot, so 195 rupees. So, the remaining the amount is from 360, 150 is issued, so 210 at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, 70 units at 1.40, and 200 units at 1.35. And the last transaction is excess of 5 units per pound on stock verification. So on 31st, there was excess of 5 units. Whenever there is excess of units, it is to be the latest current price has to be taken. So the latest purchase was on 26th and the purchase price at that time was 1. And later we have paid 70 rupees as the freight charges and then the per unit rate has changed to 1.35. So it is, should be always based on the latest price. So excess units, 5, five rupees, is charged on 1.35. That is the latest or the current purchase price. So amount is 6.75. Excess 5 units is shown receipts. Now the balance will be 210 units at 1.30, 20 units at 1.10, 300 units at 1.40, 70 units at 1.40, 200 units at 1.35 and the recent one 5 units at 1.35 which can also be written as 205 units at 1.35 which is written separately here to, to understand that there is excess of 5 units. So 200 units at 1.35 and 5 units at 1.35. So totaling up to 805 units and the total value 1089.75 the closing stock so dear students this is a problem of preparation of stores ledger with the adjustments relating to shortage excess returns to store returns to vendor as well as the uh, expenses on purchase paid on another day thank you